Hi friends, my name is Borro Dante. Let's talk about liquids. So one of you friends asked me to explain how I paint liquids the way I did with the egg white in the possessed egg episode. So let's figure it out. First of all, whenever you start painting something reflective or refractive, you should start with the background, because everything you'll see on the object is a distorted background. So let's say we have blue sky, some kind of brown ground, some kind of green leaves. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Now, from this point, a normal artist would go on with um, like a raindrop on these leaves. But now, we're gonna paint some awkward goo. Let's actually paint the egg white. So, the best way to start this is to usually define the silhouette of the object. So, let's say there's like a brown stick on which, for some reason, there's egg white. Now I'm gonna waste half an hour painting a fucking branch. Anyway. Now let's add some shadow. <laughs> like right here is important, that's where the egg will be. So let's see. We'll start with this color. Like with the color of the sky for instance. But brighter, because whenever there's a reflection, the brightest color is dominant. So let's say there's uh, clouds somewhere or whatever, something very bright. Not the sun though, the sun is the completely separate thing, we'll make a bright spot of it separately. So, what I'm painting right now is a rim reflection, the Fresnel effect, I start with that. That's the easiest thing to do. We'll define the silhouette, and it's basically as simple as just sketching, because we'll literally work with contours. So we'll add that, we'll remove some of the areas where we always have to like think where the surface is facing. So if the ray is hitting from the camera at that area, it will be reflected somewhere over there. From here, it will be reflected there. It's like precisely perpendicular angle, right? Right. So when we're hitting here, there will be just a leaf or a ground, more likely a ground, because whenever we're talking about the rim reflection, it's not reflecting here, it's reflecting here like far away into the depth, so somewhere out there there's ground probably. That's why it's getting darker. So usually try to make it brighter whenever it's facing top hemisphere where the sky is. So I'll add a lot more aggressive rim reflection in this area. Some kind of uneven surface of this thing since it's not perfect. It's a gross goo, so we'll add some random spots of this reflection on the top plane. Now, this is the reflection, the basic one, of course. We might go more accurate with the shape, but it's not the point. Next thing is the sun. Let's reflect the sun, first of all, of course. Sun is insanely bright, so the basic spot will be literally white. And there will be a couple of them, and maybe like creating a streak, since this egg white is um, kind of like hugging the branch, so it sort of vaguely repeats the cylinder shape, and cylinder reflection is always a line. So we'll add a couple of those. See, already looks kind of like a liquid, but without the refraction, which is kind of weird. So let's work on that one. Now let's think about a simple sphere, like a perfect glass sphere. What kind of distortion it creates? It makes everything upside down. You probably know about that. Whenever you look at like a drop of water or an actual ball, maybe you have like a glass ball. I used to have one when I lived with parents. Never asked why we have that, but I don't know, it was cool. So, basic distortion will be like this. We come from the center and we look, what is here? Here's green, so we'll add it here. What is here? Here is blue. So we'll add blue here, brown here, almost up to the middle, because this is actually a very small distance for refraction. So I don't know, there's a white spot here, let's add white. Now one interesting thing about distortion of sphere, and basically any drop, any gooey thing, is kind of very round, so you have to think about sort of spheres that are softly connected with each other. 
at the very edge of the sphere, it refracts the most amount of detail. So as you get closer to the edge, you have to create more and more compressed lines on those edges, because this is how things go. There's a lot of different spots on the ground and they all are compressed together and just following the silhouette of the ball. Some dark in there, some bright in there. And always remember that in optical effects, which is reflection, refraction, which is glowing, all of that works with one simple law. The brightest thing wins. So always give a bigger priority to bright spots. They should be painted last, covering everything else with themselves. So some dark sky in that area, so let's add those spots. This is all white, there's nothing going on there. Let's reflect this branch. It's going to be, I have no idea. I guess from this point, like, you try to think not just two-dimensionally like what is there, but actually when we are refracting from the ball, we have to look from the point where the ball is. This ball is probably right under the branch. That means the branch is covering the white spot of this no sky already with itself. So it's going to be at the very top of the refraction. And always don't forget to like switch to very tiny brushes at the edges because that only looks awesome when you do that. You don't have to make very tiny strokes in the middle, but on the edges, tiny strokes are really cool. Okay, that doesn't make sense though. <laughs> There should be more white in here. Always think like what's on the other side of this. Oh yeah, I fucked up by the way. <laughs> this branch is supposed to go the other way. So it's going there as a single branch like this. And then it makes a double from this point right here. There we go. But that's like a precise thing to do. And to actually finalize and make it look good, you should spend some time actually sort of painting the copy of the environment in a very distorted way. In here we have a lot simpler goals. First of all, let's work on the edges again, because edges distort the most. A lot of areas where the goo goes flat, it won't distort much at all, because it's flat. The rays go through, like through the, I don't know, flat glass. So we only work on the edges, and I'm just grabbing the nearest color of the sky, or nearest color of the branch and just create some sort of distortion like this here and there like this area I know that it goes sort of like this kind of going away because it's also round like this that means it's distorting like on the opposite side of it there's branch so I'm adding something brown same here but don't go to high contrast because it's a very tiny one Plus, on stuff like dirty, unknown goo, there's probably a lot of tiny mud in it. Something that creates diffusion, so everything becomes a bit blurred out and not as contrast as with the ball. Now, the further we go away from the branch, the less contrast we have to give to the branch spot. And here there is no sense to do that at all, it won't reach that point. Okay, what else? Let's fuck around with the branch a bit. Let's add some kind of foggy distortion because the goo is probably dirty and it has uneven surface. Like there's dust stuck on the surface, that's why it's slightly rough. So there will be a little bit of this going on. Same goes to reflection. You have to add some kind of smoothing out for that area, so let's do that maybe a little bit. But not too much because it will easily start looking like completely boring thing with very flat reflection. I can't imagine, I guess a little bit might be here when the drop of the goo goes like this and then it becomes wider before the very end where the biggest drop is getting down. At this area, this surface, this band, might be facing the leaf. That's why sometimes a little spot of something from the bottom appears on the drop like this. That's why I'm adding green spots on this area. And that kind of tells the viewer that these bubbles, they're kind of like this. Uh, what else? Well, let's distort this one. 
a bit like this a lot and here always create this shape like whatever you paint the shape of distortion should kind of try to follow the edges because everything compresses with the edges and then just like find where the sphere appears and try to find its center is it here somewhere around here that means everything will be bending around the center that's how the bubble works the drop whatever it is and doing so we just add these kind of spots and I don't know uh, at the very edge there will be something even white and that white might actually go like this since there's literally infinite white universe around so it would make sense to do even so there we go looks kind of like a thing now there's a darker leaf color in here so we'll add it a little bit in this area adding more like whenever you want to add a little bit more definition to the edges of the very transparent drop just add the sky color it gets everywhere sky is all over the place so there's there will be probably some kind of distortion of the sky here and there so add it a little bit of here plus it's slightly dirty so it's definitely gonna be what dirty means by the way it's very interesting if we have like with a pure liquid we have complete perfect angle of refraction or reflection that goes at one angle specifically like perfectly perpendicularly to the shape this is reflection refraction goes the other way around what happens when it's slightly dirty it has like dusty rough surface imagine if you're like you have the egg on the frying pan and you spread salt on it it becomes kind of like rough well imagine that a lot smaller that's what dust does to the surface so in that case every point won't be just going perpendicularly which it will but also it will go like here like here 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 this is the sort of diffusion that's going on because of that because at every tiny spot there's a lot of different details on the surface if we zoom in here it will be not perfectly straight reflecting like this but more like a lot of dusty particles reflecting like this like this like this like this and they're all creating a bunch of different colors blending together into little one spot in there that's why color becomes blurred out magic the last thing to add as far as i remember i had that done in the egg white in the possessed egg is we're choosing some sort of a very soft brush we're choosing almost white color but slightly yellowish and we're creating like a foggy color of the goo itself like imagine looking at a very dirty water in the river or a lake the deeper the water the less transparent it is so in that case we'll have this effect like imagine this goo is really mixed up with dust and this is why we have this kind of color now it's gonna be only in the center don't paint it at the edges because edges are very small depth now this is actually the fog is basically the real geometry the real color of the object that means it receives shadows from other objects so if there's a branch underneath the branch we will have kind of a dark yellow color there will be like a shadow from it but on top of the branch we will be lit with something really bright and don't forget bright dominates so it's gonna be covering up the dark a little bit kind of like this try not to make it too obvious the way I did <laughs> so if you're working in a separate layer you can easily just create a strong effect and then lower it as much as you feel it looking natural now I guess this is it looks like a goo a bit too obvious refraction of the branch here the more dirty and the more complex the surface is with the whole dust thing the more spread the refraction and reflection will be so we'll have kind of like soft spots going on here and there 
and the grass, everything will be slightly blurred out. But still, this blurring out will be kind of avoiding the center of the sphere. So even here, it's kind of more blurred out this way, but less over the center. I don't know, kind of like this. Let's add a glowing effect. Who doesn't like glowing effect? From the sun, I mean. Because we have a lot of almost white reflections, but the sun is like 100 times white. It's super bright. And we have to kind of pay respect to that brightness. So let's add a little bit of this. Whenever something's brighter than just white, we should create a glow effect around the white spot. So it lets you know that this is the real deal. Now let's add here as well. And by the way, here too. Because sun will be not only reflected, but refracted as well. And if refraction is kind of showing everything, all the picture is just upside down, you see everything. Reflection is only showing things that are brighter than the surface of the object at the moment. That's why we always see the reflection of the sun, but we don't see, for instance, the reflection of this leaf in here. Although we might add it if it's really brightly lit, but in most cases it won't be dominating on top of this refracted spot of this white sky here. It's darker than it, then it makes no sense, it won't show up. So you stick with just refraction at most times and just add some kind of like, think there's, I don't know, something bright at that area. That's why something is also reflected around the surface. This is reflection on top of refraction. And yeah, let's add the spot of the sun in here and it's going to be kind of like eating away the branch because it's so fucking bright, the sun. There we go, looks real. Same kind of stuff here. These uh, drops probably won't reflect the sun because branch is exactly covering the sun away from them. But this drop is far away enough to kind of look from the side of it because it's not like perfect. The branch is not perfectly under the sun. So there is a slight angle and with a certain distance the drop will be able to see the sun. So this one will be refracting the sun. But not reflecting because there is no angle that will go this way. Hmm. Cool. So there is a very weird goo on a branch. Oh, and one last thing I wanted to add. That's interesting. Like, imagine this ball we have here. Where is it? There it is. Imagine this ball is not just a perfectly transparent glass, but imagine it's like a... It's a perfectly spherical wine bottle. Wine bottles have a very green glass, right? And it's thick. Now, in that case, if we want to paint it, we're gonna go inside of this sphere in multiply mode. Hear me out. And we'll use some kind of greenish color and we'll go on the edges. Let's create a mask. So we'll add this kind of stuff. Right? Now, right now the ball became very dark. That means reflection will become dominant. So we have to add more details of the reflection. So let's do that. Well, let's start with the rim reflection right here. Something green, it's even brighter. Some blue stuff is gonna like create a soft overlay. Let's use a soft brush even, so it would look... There we go. And that kind of stuff. Brown is darker, so flat brown. There we go. This is how the glass works. Now, why this happens, why do we have to darken everything at the edges? First of all, why we have to darken? Because whenever glass is clean, like there's no dust or, I don't know, any other mixing in, glass itself creates filtering. Filtering, it's when color is just being removed from anything that's being refracted by the object. Well, I mean, the bottle remains completely transparent, but everything becomes darker into green, because everything but the green color gets filtered away. That's how things work, it's just trust me. That's why we add the dark green tint in multiply mode. Multiply does that, it filters away all the colors except for the color that we paint with. Now, why do we go darker at the edges? I mean, you probably know that it should happen, but why? 
And this is why, if we look at the bottle from the top view, like if we cut it in half, let's exaggerate a bit and make it very thick glass. Now, if we were watching from this direction, if we were looking right through the glass, this is the amount of thickness we get when we look through this point. Now, if we are looking from this area though, look how much glass we collect with our ray while we are going through the glass. That's why the closer to the edge we get, the thicker, the longer these portions will get and at some point it will become one long line. And that's how much glass we get, it's like a very deep water, the same thing. So there it is, I hope I answered all of the possible questions about reflection and refraction. Someday I will be able to pronounce it normally, refraction. So yeah, this is it. You can find this PSD file on the Patreons page with all the layers and such. And I thank you for watching if you did, I guess you did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend, spit on trees. Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye! Such a weird accidental painting. It's better than all I was painting for the last month.